hi to everybody now in this video we are just going to deal with chapter 24 and chapter 24 is about the Gauss's the Gauss's law now after doing this chapter you will be able to define the electric flask and Gauss law and you'll also be able to derive Coulomb's law from Gauss's Gauss's law and you will be in a position to also solve problems related to to the above right now let us just start by defining the electric flask electric flask is the product of the magnitude of the electric field and the surface area a perpendicular to to the field's line as illustrated in in this in this figure now the mathematical description of a flask the electric flask is just given by by this equation here where this e is the magnitude of electric field and a is the is the magnitude of the area and this subscript e here denotes that this is this flask is electric flask right the units of flask is newtons meter squared per per kilo right now the electric flux is proportional to the number of electric fields line penetrating some some surface now the lesser the fields lines entering the surface or penetrating the surface the lesser the the, the electric flask the higher the fields lines uh, the more the 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 electric flask now the fields lines may make some angle theta with the perpendicular to to the surface now i would like to demonstrate that to you now suppose that i have this box and the surface area is this surface area here now i'm gonna turn it like this now this is my surface area and i want to define this is the surface area i want to define the vector area a the vector area a is that vector pointing in this direction and it is always perpendicular to to the surface area now this is a vector a perpendicular to that surface now the magnitude of this vector the magnitude of this vector is just this this area right now suppose also that the electric fields is also in the same direction as as that vector a now in that case say the electric field is also going to this surface in this direction right it must therefore be easy for you to see that if the fields are is also coming in this direction therefore the angle between the electric field and the that vector area must just be equivalent to zero now the electric field might also be interacting with the surface not at perpendicular but it might be interacting with the surface at a certain angle theta for example if i tilt this box like this therefore do you see that the electric field is interacting with the surface at a certain angle theta right that's what i wanted to show you good now maybe to further also illustrate to you uh, right i will just uh, have to show you the the following saying now i am throwing the a certain area a certain area a and this red region of this uh, where I'm the red region and I'm gonna call that the area a now this area a I will just have to know the length from there to there and then multiply by that other length now what is this vector a vector a is that vector which is perpendicular to the surface and is always perpendicular to the surface now that's vector a now the magnitude of this vector is just this area down down there 
right now for argument's sake suppose that i am taking that box again okay, but i want to put it in this way this is the procession that we are going to see now in that case this when i want to throw it in this uh bot i'm going to have this box like that now in that case what is that vector a vector a i'm going to take this vector a to be this because it must always be perpendicular to to the surface it must always be perpendicular to the surface and the magnitude of this vector is nothing else but just that area of 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 of, of this um uh, this shape right now suppose that the electric field now is from the left that's my electric field is from the left the e field is from the left i'm gonna write this is my e field now i want you to know or to see that the angle between two vectors pointing in the same direction is just zero for example in this case the electric field and a the angle between them is just zero therefore the angle theta between e and a is just equals to zero degree for argument's sake say the electric field is coming from the 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 right it's coming from the right say this is my electric field is going like that that's my electric field now if this is my e field the angle between the angle theta between the electric field and the vector a in that case because these are anti-parallel vectors it is just going to be equal to 180 180 180 degree so this is what i wanted to show you right now having said that if the electric field is coming in this direction and there must be a width perpendicular where the electric field is actually interacting with this uh, surface and if this is the length of this uh, this area and you also have the the width of this area therefore in order for you to be able to get the the value for area you have to know the length times the width right now but the the width perpendicular from the trigonometric functions or from the soccer tour, it can be determined in terms of w cos of theta right now the area perpendicular the area perpendicular that is that area which is which fields which is perpendicular to the to the fields it can just be given by by this equation there because the area it must be the width perpendicular time is the the length now we already know what is the width perpendicular now if you plug that this is what you are going to have now as a result because we know what is lw lw is just the area therefore a perpendicular can just be defined in terms of 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 a cos cos of of theta right now what is the flask flask must be the magnitude of the electric field times it must be the magnitude of the electric field times the the magnitude of of of, of the of the a perpendicular now in that case this is your electric flask the electric flask is just given by this now this equation here looks familiar now before i can even dive into the other section i just want to remind you about the the dot product of of two vectors that you have done in your first uh, semester you remember if i have vector a dot b this can just be given as a magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b and the cosine of an angle between them now the dot product 
of two vectors is always a scalar is always a scalar quantity now this equation here is exactly the same as that equation there but in that case your a vector is just going to be the electric field dot b now that b now it becomes a which is just equals to which is just equals to which is just equals to the the magnitude of of vector e the magnitude of vector e time is the magnitude of a and then the cosine of an angle between them so this equation here is just this equation right and that must just be equals to the electric flask and of course we know that the electric flask is a scalar quantity is not a vector so this just shows that that the flask is not a vector it's just the the scalar the scalar quantity right now the electric flask is just given by by this equation where en is the vector component perpendicular to to the to the surface right now i also want to show you something uh, that is uh, if the flask is the flask is a maximum when the surface is perpendicular to the to the field what does that mean it means the following say i have this surface here say i have this surface here i have this surface like that now what is that vector a vector a i'm going to plot it like that because it must always be perpendicular to that surface now if this electric field is going in this direction that's my electric field is going in that direction that's e e e field now in that case this the angle between e and a is just equals to is just equal to zero now maybe i must also throw you a cosine graph so that you can always remember what is the cosine graph cosine graph is like this if i plot the cosine graph here and i call this say theta now and say here i have a, a function of theta as my y axis therefore the cosine graph will just be like that where this point here is 360 degree and then i have 180 degree here and then here i have 90 90 degree and then at this point i must have two 270 degree now this is very important in a way that now if the angle between e and a is equal to zero therefore the flask is maximum when the electric field is perpendicular to the to the surface the electric flask is perpendicular to the surface but the electric flask is in the same direction as that vector a therefore this is the statement that i'm trying to build there now in a case where the this uh electric field is is parallel to the to the to the surface for example just wanna plot that one if the electric field is parallel to the to the surface i'm gonna plot the surface like that now this is my electric field vector there i'm sending the electric field in this direction now what is that vector a vector a must be that vector pointing up that's vector a and of course vector a can also be a vector pointing pointing down but for argument's sake i am just choosing it to be that vector pointing up there and of course it can also point down now in this case the angle between e and a when the surface is parallel to the field 
therefore it's just going to be 90 degree and at 90 degree when the angle the cos of 90 is just equivalent to 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 zero now as a result this is the statement uh, this is the meaning of 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 these statements that i i've made there the flask is zero when the surface is parallel to to the field now the flask is given by this equation this is only valid for only small element of of area right now the general electric flask in general is just given by by this by this equation here where this da is nothing else but just the surface integral now that is why in this integral here it is written a surface down here because this is in fact the double integral because this da is an area argument right now the surface integral means that the integral must be evaluated over the surface in question in general the value of the flask will depend both on the fields patterns and on the on the surface right now for argument's sake let us just consider this uh, a closed surface which looks like a rugby ball now in this case if the electric field is being sent in this direction i want you to see that the interaction with uh, the, uh, the electric field interaction with the surface is not uniform or is not the same for example in region one if i zoom region one i put it here this is what is going to happen in 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 in, in this region one now the electric field is pointing in that direction and that uh, vector a is pointing in this direction now in region number two when i zoom this is what is going to happen with region number two the electric field is going in that direction and that that uh, vector a two is actually uh, they are making 90 with 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 the electric field now in region number three if you zoom i put it here this is what is going to happen in in, in that region that theta is just going to be greater than 90 but less than 180. now to further discuss this for example in region one because this is what you have seen in, in region one the electric field lines are crossing the surface from the inside to outside and as a result theta is less than 90 and the flask is positive the flask of course will be positive if theta is less than 90. look at the values of the cos theta when it is less than 90. the values will just be positive right now in region number two we are seeing that the field grazes surface at theta is equal to 90 therefore the flask is zero the flask is zero in that case because the cosine of of 90 is just equal to zero now in region number three we can just see that uh, the value is less than 180 but uh, it's it's bigger than 90 in that case the flask is negative the flask is negative in that case because the the cosine of values greater than 90 but uh, less than 180 are, are just negative now in that case the field lines are crossing the surface from the outside to to the inside right now the net flask through the surface is proportional to the net number of lines leaving the surface this net number of lines is just the same number of lines leaving leaving the surface minus the number entering the surface now the en is the component of the electric field perpendicular to to the surface then the flask is just given by by this this equation right note that there is now no vector sign at this point because e dot da is just a scalar quantity therefore the vector signs can be ignored and the dot product can just be, be ignored therefore this is what you are going to have for 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 this equation right now suppose a point charge is is located at the center of a spherical surface the electric field at the surface of 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 sphere and the total flask through the sphere are, are determined now the radius of the sphere is halved what happened to the flask through the sphere 
and to the magnitude of the electric field at the surface. Right. Number A, the flask and field both increases. B, the flask and fields both decreases. C, the flask increases and the fields decreases. And D, the flask decreases and the fields increases. E, the flask remains the same and the fields increases. Therefore, this one must be correct. The flask decreases and the field remains the same. There's no way that the, 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 the flask will, will increase. Now, let me also explain why the electric field is going to increase when you halve, when you halve the, the distance. Now, remember from your chapter 23 or previous chapter, the magnitude of the electric field is just given by Ke Q over R squared. Now, if I have the 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 radius, this is going to be one divided by two. This is going to be one div one divided by two. And then I have R here, and then I'm a square. And this equation is just going to end up with to the power four here, uh, to the factor of four k e q divided by by r squared. Now that is why option number e is right because the electric field will be four times the 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 initial value when you half when you half the 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 radius. Right. Now, example 24.1, flux through a cube. Now, consider a uniform electric field E orientated in the X direction in an empty space. A cube of length L is placed in the field oriented as shown in the figure. Find the net flask through the surface of the cube. Now, there are six surfaces of, of this cube, but what I want to show you is the fact that the surface number three for example and the the vector a3 and the electric field they are perpendicular to each other as a result the flux there is just going to be zero the same with the the vector a and the electric field and also for this side of this cube this side of this cube the vector a is just going to be perpendicular to electric field and the other side of the the cube that other side of the cube therefore we are not going to consider those 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 uh, uh, surfaces because the flux there is just going to be zero the only surfaces which are going to be very important to us is the 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 the, the surface a where there's a vector a and the surface two where there's vector a vector a2 now in this case this is what you are going to have the flask is just going to be the flask for this surface one and surface two now let us just start with surface uh, surface number one as you can see the surface number one and the electric field the angle between them because these are anti-parallel vectors is just going to be 180 while the angle between a2 and electric field is just going to be zero as a result, for surface number one, the angle there is 180. As a result, you are just going to have this minus here. And now the area of a cube is L squared because we have to multiply length times times length uh, the of, 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 of that surface number one. Now for number two, surface number two, this is what you are going to have for the surface number two. Uh, because the angle between E and the... the the vector a a2 is just zero this is what you're going to have now the flask total flask you just have to add all the flask now you are just getting zero what is the physical meaning of this why the flask is zero there the physical meaning of this is the fact that the number of fields lines entering this side of the cube is exactly the same of number of fields and which are exiting exiting the 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 cube that is why now the flask is is just equals to equals to zero good let me also introduce you to the gauss law mm. which was 
or which is named after Carl Gauss, who was a German mathematician as well as a physicist. And he made a lot of contribution in electromagnetism and many other fields of, 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 of maths and uh, mechanics. Right. Gauss law is an expression of the general relationship between the net electric flask through a closed surface and the charge enclosed by, by that surface. Now, the closed surface is often called the Gaussian surface. Gauss law is of fundamental importance in the study of, of, the, of the electric fields. For example, consider a positive uh, charge place in the sphere now in that case you are just going to make your spherical gaussian surface this is your spherical gaussian surface but because we know what is the electric field at the certain distance r then if we know the charge then we can be able to compute the electric field from the chapter 23 the electric field at the surface of of of, of at, at, at every point in the surface of the sphere is just given by, by this equation there. Right. Now, that is your, your electric field. Good. Now, the field's lines are directly radial outwards and are perpendicular to the surface at every point. Now, as a result, the flask can be given by this equation but e dot da it can just be written as e and da just as magnitude but the electric field is always constant therefore it must it can be taken outside 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 the integral now this is very simple for example if you have this the integral of of for argument's sake if you have the integral of 2x say dx here now in this case 2 is just a constant it can be written outside the integral and you end up with with x x dx in that case so this is what i i am just uh, referring to when i'm saying the electric field is constant because the electric field doesn't change the electric field doesn't change now as a result it can be taken outside the, the integral but now we know what is e then we are just going to plug what is e there now we know what is e now if we plug what is e because we know what is e and then from there we know uh, we are just going to use the advantage of the symmetry because this is a spherical the integral da it must just be 4 pi r squared that is the integral of those small area element for the sphere will just make the total area of a sphere and that total area of a sphere in this case is just for pi r squared now if you plug e here and then you plug the integral da as for pi r squared this is what you are going to have now from chapter 23 we know that ke ke is just given as 1 over 4 pi epsilon epsilon naught that is the value for for ke now if you plug that value of ke here this is what you are just going to have now that means that the electric flux doesn't depend on on the radius it only depends on the magnitude of of the charge that's that's what the equation is is telling us right but remember this is the flask which means this must just be equals to that right now uh, but based on the principle of uh, superposition or of electric field since the electric field due to many charges is the vector sum of the electric fields produced by the individual charge the flask through any closed surface can then be expressed as as this equation here now it must it is also very important to always know or remember that the net electric flask through a closed surface that surrounds no charge is just zero what does that mean we have just seen that a flask we, we have just seen now that the flask is just uh, given by by this equation here is just given by by this equation that i'm going to write here that the flask of e is just given by q divided by epsilon naught now if 
the surface includes no charge if q is zero therefore the flux is also is also zero that's what the statement is is saying good now the flask or the net flask through any closed surface surrounding a point charge is just given by this equation here and it is purely independent of of the shape or the radius of the the sphere if it was a cylinder it doesn't depend or if it was a cube it doesn't depend on on the shape of of the of the surface that is enclosing that charge good for an example suppose that you have a surface one which is a sphere it is enclosing uh, this uh, q and in this case i know that q must be positive because the field lines are radiating outwards the the charge and then you have another arbitrary surface two and then you also have another different surface three now in this case what is the flask through surface one and surface two and surface three the flask through all these surfaces is just the same why because the flask is proportional to the number of lines which are passing through that surface now in this case the number of lines passing through s1 s2 s3 are just the same right now this actually verifies that the net flask through any closed surface surrounding a point charge q is given by by q over epsilon naught we only need to know the magnitude of of the charge the shape is not important it, because flux doesn't depend on on the shape perhaps this will also make you understand the previous quiz now let us also talk about the 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 charge when the charge is outside the the closed surface in this case the the flask for this uh, problem is 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 equal to zero because the number of field lines which are entering the surface is the same as the number of field lines which are exiting the surface and we have already seen that uh, when we're doing that um, a cube uh, problem good now the general or the final gauss law states that the flask is given as the integral of a closed surface e dot dA is equal to q in divided by epsilon naught. Now q in is the net charge inside the surface. E represents the electric field at any point on, on the surface and E is total electric field and may have a contribution from uh, charges both inside and, and, and outside of, of the surface. Although Gauss law can in theory be solved to find the electric field for any configuration in practice it is limited to symmetric situation and then i will just explain that to you for an example the flask is just given by this equation the flask is just given by this equation flask of e is just equals to the integral of a closed surface e i dot d a e dot d a but because the dot product of two vectors say uh, the maximum flux the maximum flux will only be when this uh the angle between e and d a is equal to zero therefore i can just write this equation in terms of 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 just e integral d a now the integral without vector signs of course now in this case the gauss law is depends on the symmetry now this da the integral da depends on whether it was a spherical symmetry or it was cylindrical symmetry and then i will also show you so that you can just put the area of a sphere or the area of of a cylinder there good that's what that statement is 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 saying right now let us also do the following quick quiz if the next if the net flux through a gaussian surface is zero the following four statements could be could be true which of the statement must be true now number a there are no charges inside the surface now number b the net charge inside the surface is zero 
now number three the electric field is zero everywhere on the surface and number d the number of electric field line entering the surface equal the number of electric field leaving the surface that must be correct and uh, number b must also must also be be correct that the net charge inside the the surface is is just zero now to verify this or to further illustrate that is because we know that the electric field a uh, flux is just given as q q enclosed divided by epsilon naught now if the q enclosed is zero therefore the flask will also will will always be be equivalent to 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 zero all right now let us also do the conceptual example for the flask due to a, a point charge now a spherical gas in surface surrounds a point charge q describe what happens to the total flask through the surface if the net charge is triple if the net charge is triple what happens to the flask now the flask is given by by that equation flask is just given by this equation here it's q in in close divided by epsilon naught now in this case if the the charge is triple the flask will also be triple the flask will also be triple because will increase by the factor of three now what will happen with the when the radius of the sphere is doubled the flask doesn't depend on the shape and nothing will happen in that case the surface is changed to a cube and nothing will happen uh, even in this case i mean you have already seen uh, different shapes that the flask is just the same good the charge is moved to another location inside the, the surface as long as that charge is enclosed by that surface the flask is not going to to change right now how to apply the gauss law to to use the gauss law you want to choose a gaussian surface over which the surface integral can be simplified and the electric field be determined for example you just use the advantage of a symmetry uh, that is if the Gaussian surface is uh, uh, spherical. You just the, use the integral dA to be the the area of of a sphere. Now remember, the Gaussian surface is the surface you choose. It does not have to coincide with with the real surface. And then I will just show you a very good examples in in the uh, following slides. Good. And what is also very important is that the value of the electric field can be argued from the symmetry to be constant over over the surface and the dot product of e dot da can be expressed as just a simple e e da because e and da are just parallel now the dot product is zero because e and da are perpendicular to each other remember the the cosine graph the dot product of two vectors there must be a cause of an angle now the field is zero over the portion of 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 the of the surface in case this is 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 the case right let us also do the example 24.3 a spherical symmetrical charge a distribution now an insulating solid sphere of radius a shown here has a uniform volume charge density given by this raw and carries a total positive charge q now calculate the magnitude of the electric field at a point outside the sphere now before you can do that i just want to introduce you to to the line charge now suppose that you have a, a rod for argument's sake suppose that you have a rod and now this rod is got throughout the whole rod there is a charge now in that case this rod if that rod is got length l now the 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 line charge in that case is just given as q divided by by l because this is a line charge is not a point charge because you remember if you have a point charge then the 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 point charge the total charge you just you just have to write q for the point charge but in this case the the charge is just spread along this line of the rod now in that case we call that a line charge which is nothing else but q divided by 
a q per unit length right now what will happen if this is actually on the surface say i have a surface here and this charge is just spread through this uh, surface area now in that case we normally use the sigma as a surface charge and it's just charge per per area now what will happen if i have a sphere and the whole volume of a sphere is just filled with this charge is just filled with this charge if the volume of this sphere is just filled with this with this charge now in that case that is what we call the charge at uh, the row or charge density which is nothing else but q divided by by the volume now for this problem this is what we are going to to be using all right now in this case if you you want to get the total charge for 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 for, for the line charge uh, this is what is going to happen if you want to get the total charge in that case a q is just given by lambda l while for the surface charge q is just given by 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 sigma a and for for the volume charge is just given by by rho rho v right now we are ready to proceed with this uh, uh, a problem to solve this this problem now in that case if you have to get the the electric fields at the region where the where the r of the gaussian surface is greater than the a of this uh solid sphere now you you just push uh, punch your 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 or you write your your gauss law and sorry for these squares are supposed to be the circles indicating the the closed surface now in that case this is the case now this can just be written without vectors and now that must be equal to q in close over epsilon naught now this is just uh, the the e can be taken outside the integral because it's, it's, it's a constant now this is e and then the integral da we just use the advantage of a symmetry because we know that our gaussian surface the gaussian surface is normally denoted by the dotted dotted lines like that now in that case we know that the spherical gaussian surface has a area of 4 pi r squared that's why you don't have to scratch your head to calculate the integral of da because we know the the area of a sphere from our our very low low grades i mean in our grade one uh, this is what they taught us even the volume of 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 the sphere 4 over 3 pi r cube now in this case the integral da for a spherical a gaussian surface is just this and now if you rearrange the equation this is what you are going to have for r is less than a now the next question is uh find the magnitude of the electric field at the point inside the sphere now the total charge is just given by rho v why is just given by rho v you remember if this is the charge density now the total charge if you rearrange this equation this is what you are going to have now that is why you are seeing this now what is the volume of the sphere the volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube now you must also for r is less than a therefore it means that your gaussian surface must be within the the a it must be plotted inside inside the the region where 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 a is is inside inside the sphere remember the the the, the question a was asking you for when r is greater than a when r is greater than a therefore r is greater than a you must be somewhere outside 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 the sphere but when r is less than a you must be inside your gaussian surface must be done inside inside the sphere now the other thing that i want you to see here is now what we know or what we are given here is the charge density is the raw for the whole sphere of radius a but now if the r is less than a it means that the charge enclosed by the by that gaussian surface is less than the the raw is less than the raw is totally less than the raw because it's only raw 
when it is outside 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 the sphere now that's what I, 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 I wanted you to see now you, you do the same because uh, this is the area of the sphere you just use the advantage of the of the of the symmetry now the electric field if you rewrite the equation this is what you are going to have but we know what is q in in terms of the charge density because we were given the charge density now this is what is 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 is, is, is q in you just raw time is the the volume of the gaussian surface now in that case this is what you are just going to have as as, as your answer rho divided by three epsilon naught times r but we want to write this uh, in terms of the total charge q now if we write this in, in terms of the total charge q because we know what is wrong what is raw rho? rho is q divided by volume now as a result if you do that this is what you are going to have this is what you are going to have now the rho is nothing else but it's q divided by 4 pi a cube this 4 pi a cube because it's just the the, the that uh, fraction of 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 that charge this is just the fraction of of the charge now as a result this is what you are going to have for r is less than a now suppose the radial position ra is approached from inside the sphere and from outside do we obtain the same value of electric field from both direction for example let us just start with this one for for r is less than a now it will mean the limit must just be approaching a now in that case if the limit if r is approaching a that equation we mean that we just be coming to that point there now this is just what we are going to see if uh, r tends to to a now the same thing happens to 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 the to the inside if we are approaching a now in that case the limit is also approaching a now the the answers will just be the same by the way this is this point at that point the electric field is just is just the same for 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 it's it's just k e q divided by by a squared right now i also wanted to stretch you a little bit to also do the cylindrical uh symmetry charge uh, distribution now in this case you are required to find the electric field a distance r from a line charge of a positive charge of an infinite length and a constant charge per unit length now that is uh, the line charge the line charge is this one here this is just the line charge now the total charge for that is just lambda l right now in this case you uh, because this is the wire a wire can be treated as a as a cylinder as a cylinder therefore we have to choose our cylindrical gaussian surface now we have to choose the cylindrical gaussian surface now in that case we know that the if the charge is positive the electric field will just be radiating outwards like like this now as a result if you use the gauss law this is the gauss law and now the charge close because it's the line charge the charge enclosed is just given by lambda l but let us just use the advantage of a symmetry do you see now in this case the e the, uh, the integral da in this case is no longer uh, because this is a a cylinder is 2 pi r l remember the area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h where h is your height but in this case our height is just the length now if you rearrange the equation the l will cancel each other this is what you are going to have as your as your electric field now let us also go through example 24.5 for a plane of 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 charge now in this case uh, uh, you've got the plane of charges there uh, what i want you to see is if we choose the cylindrical gaussian surface what i want you to see is the fact that the curve surface this kv surface will just the flask there will just be zero why because that vector a is just making a 90 degree angle with the electric field but the only surfaces which are going to contribute is this the top side of this uh, cylinder this side and the other side as a result we are just going to apply the gauss law and there will be a factor of two to 
take note or to take the contribution of this end of the surface and the other end of 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 the cylindrical uh, Gaussian surface. Now, as a result, this is what you are going to have. And if you rearrange the equation for the electric fields, now the electric field is just given by by this. And I want you to note that this does not depend on on R. Therefore, the fields is just uniform, uniform every everywhere. I as the last thing for 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 this chapter, I also want us to discuss the property of a conductor in electrostatic equilibria when there is no net motion of charges within a conductor the conductor is said to be in electrostatic equilibrium the electric field is zero everywhere inside the conductor whether the conductor is a solid or is a hollow now if the conductor is isolated and carried, carries a charge the charge resides on its surface the electric field at a point just outside the charge conductor is perpendicular to the surface and the magnitude of that uh, uh, field is just given by by sigma divided by epsilon naught and this is what we've just uh, done in the previous slide where this sigma is nothing else but it is the surface charge density this sigma is just the surface charge density charge per per, per, per area right now uh, consider a conducting slab of uh, in an external electric field now if the field inside the conductor were not zero free electrons in the conductor will experience an electrical force as we have seen uh, when we put this uh, charge particle in the region of electric field they experience a force and and as a result they 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 accelerate and now this electrons will not be 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 in equilibrium therefore they cannot be a field inside 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 the conductor right now before the external field is applied free electrons are distributed randomly throughout the the conductor when the field is applied the electron redistribute until the magnitude of internal fields equals the magnitude of the external field now there is a net zero or zero field inside the the conductor the redistribution takes about 10 to the power minus 16 seconds which is just a very small time and it can just be considered as instantaneous now if the conductor is hollow the electric field inside the conductor is 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 also zero now because the charges are resides on the surface if we do the Gaussian surface inside that surface, therefore there will be no charges inside here because the charges are resides on the surface. As a result, if you don't have Q, therefore you don't have electric field. Why am I saying so? Is because if you don't have uh, if you don't have Q enclosed, therefore you don't have electric field. Why? Because electric field for us to have the electric field. For us to have the electric field, let me just consider the, the magnitude. We need to have Q. There must be Q for us to have the electric field. So if there's no Q, the electric field is not there. Now, the moment we don't have electric field, it will mean that we are also not going to have flask because flask also depends on the on the on the on the electric field. Right. So that's that's basically what the the statements are. Yeah, I see. Now, since no net charge can be inside the surface, any net charge must just reside on the on the surface. Gauss law does not indicate the distribution of these charges only, but it only it must be on 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 the surface of 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 the conductor. Now, as a last uh, uh, example in this chapter, let us just do a sphere and a shell example 24.7. Now, a solid insulating sphere of radius a carries a net positive charge q uniformly distributed through its uh, uh, volume. Now, a conducting sphere shell of inner radius b and the outer radius c is constrict uh, concentric with the solid sphere and carries a net charge to Q using Gauss law find the electric field in the region labeled 1 2 3 and 4 in the figure below and the charge uh, the distribution on the shell when the entire system is in electrostatic equilibrium now it is in electrostatic 
equilibrium. Therefore, as a result, uh, for the region number one, we have uh, already done that. The region number one, the Gauss, uh, the Gaussian surface must just be somewhere inside, 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 inside A, inside A, inside the radius A. Therefore, uh, for that region, the electric field is just given by, by this equation here. This is what we have done uh, previously. Uh, and then for region number two, the Gaussian surface is just be going to be here. And as a result, the charge enclosed here is just Q. As a result, the electric field is just given by this. But for E3, the electric field is just equal to zero because that is just the conducting um, shell. Now, that is just going to be, to be zero. Uh, and then for the region number four, the Gaussian surface, or in fact, for region number two, the Gaussian surface is just going to be somewhere inside this 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 uh, this region three. But for region number four, the Gaussian surface would just be outside, outside. The R is just going to be greater than greater than C. Now in that case, what is the total charge enclosed? The total charge enclosed by that surface is positive Q minus two Q. Now the Total charge is therefore minus Q. As a result, you will just find this minus sign in in this E E4. So good people, I would like to pause here for, for this chapter. And here are your tutorial problems. And I would like to say goodbye. And then I will see you next time.